thank you. <laughs> so um, we're glad you're here. And I'm glad you're here, and I'd like to uh, welcome, welcome you to come, make a couple of announcements. Um, we have sign up for the summer book study. There's daytime or evening options. We have, and the sign up sheet, if you haven't signed up yet and you're interested, is on the bulletin board to the right as you go into the fellowship hall. The Raise the Roof fundraiser update is $286,310. We're getting closer. <laughs> Next week, our service project, so come casual, um, we're putting together hygiene kits. Don't open the packages if you have packages of razors and toothbrushes and comb and that are not <laughs> that are not individually wrapped. Um, and we have a slide for remaining needs, and we'll let you know if we have uh, leftovers that we need to finish packages with after next week. So, let's see. I think that's, oh, ties and offerings, the usual. So, we don't pass the plate. The box is in the back, and you can always scan your code and give money that way. So I'd like to introduce Leslie Hanscom. Pastor Kelly said she's wonderful, and that we would find that she's wonderful. She's the Director of Community and Family Engagement at, family, or at Valley Community Presbyterian Church in Portland. And prior to working there, she was the Director of Children and Family Ministries at Lake Grove Presbyterian, where Kelly had the great pleasure of working with her. She said, Leslie is one of the most creative, hospitable, and welcoming people I know, and I laugh harder with Leslie than most. Leslie and her husband Mark have two adult children and one new grandson, Bo, and an adopted bunny. The Dixon family will forever be grateful for Leslie and Mark. Our lives are better because the Hanscoms are in them. And I'm certain, she's certain, that we will feel the same after today. So please welcome Leslie. Let us stand for worship and the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. A steadfast love endures forever. We see God's wondrous works all around us. So we come to praise God's holy name. Open wide your hearts in this time of worship. We lift our hearts to God. God is good. All, all the time. time. And all the time. God is good. All right, let's praise God with some songs. Shall we sing together? Yes, we shall. Don't with the hiding 
plan from the start. You are sent for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a contest for that kind of love. I don't Let us pray. Creator God, we gather in wonder this day, astonished by the complexity of all you have made, acknowledging how small each of us is in the midst of your world. Yet your love gives us significance. When we are overcome by forces beyond our control, you speak words of peace. When trouble or sorrow sets in, you give us strength to persevere. Source, Savior, and Spirit of life, we offer you praise and honor, love and loyalty with our lips and with our lives, now and always. Amen. Time for our opening hymn, number 408 in the purple hymnal, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit.
Please be seated. Our call to confession. Family of God, we are called to live differently. Let's come to God and confess the ways we have chosen to walk in a way that feels more comfortable and safe rather than the way that extends love and hope to the world God so loves. We will confess first in corporate prayer and then in silent prayer. God, our hope and our help, you call us to serve in the footsteps of Jesus. But we confess we look to our own interests first. You ask us to love our neighbors, but we are good at finding fault in others. You call us to do justice for the vulnerable, but we hesitate to take a stand. Forgive us. Open our hearts to anyone in need and help us to trust in your mercy for them and for us. The mercy of our God is from everlasting to everlasting. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and made new. Give thanks for God's generosity and share it with your neighbors. Thanks be to God. <coughs> one another.
let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's words as we pray. God of wisdom, send your Holy Spirit to us as we listen for your word. Inspire us through what we hear to act with courage and compassion we experience in Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 2 Corinthians 6, verses 1 through 13, found on pages 1799 to 1800. And it'll also be on the screen. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak to my children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Lord, we give you this time to hear from your word. Let the meditations of my mouth be pleasing to you. And let each of us, the speaker and the hearer, be attentive to what you would have for us this day. In your son's name, amen. It's June, and summer has begun. School is out. The propane tank for the barbecue has been filled. Sunscreen from last year has been refound. Marshmallows for summer s'mores have been purchased. Berries in Oregon are ripening, and the days are gloriously long. For me, summer always brings to mind summer camp. By show, By of, show hands, of hands, how many, how many of, you of you attended, attended a, summer a summer camp sometime in your life? My summer camp experience was at a YMCA camp on the shores of Long Lake in northern Wisconsin, aptly named Camp Manitou. Now, summer camps often have camp songs de dedicated to them to build a sense of community and to remind the campers of who they are going to be that week that they are at camp. And Camp Manitou was no different. And after 60 years, I can still sing with gusto the Manitou Riser. We are from Manitou, Manitou, best camp in the land, joy at every hand. We are from Manitou, Manitou, that's where the good girls go. <laughs> Let me tell you, I have still not figured out what he meant by this is where the good girls go. I think it was trying to, you know, be a Midwestern, this is how you're going to behave this week. But today's Old Testament scripture is also a song 
a song that was sung by God's people on their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. A song that re reiterated to them who they were as a communal people. Psalm 133 is one of the songs of ascent, traditionally sung by Jewish pilgrims as they travel to the temple three times a year for festivals. The pilgrims would sing the songs on the uphill road to the city, and can't you imagine that they needed some songs to sing as they were trudging up to the temple? The songs of ascent are attributed to King David, and they reminded the Israelites, God's people, of God's grace, his mercy, his provision, his protection, his salvation of them time and time again. The songs would have been known to the singers regardless of their age, their tribe, their village, or their walk of life. Psalm 133 is very short. It's just three verses made by combining a proverb or a wisdom saying with rich, worshipful, liturgical words. Listen now to the word of God. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling down on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life evermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The singers of Psalm 133 might have thought of their own families when they were singing verse 1. The solidarity of the family was fundamental to Israel's social and religious structure, ensuring stability. Perhaps the singers would have often thought that the first verse was in reference to the reunification of the nature of Israel. But today, let's marry the psalm with the verses and the words of Jesus found in Mark 3, 31 through 34. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside and are looking for you. Where are my mother and brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Eugene Peterson, in his book, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction, shares these words when writing on Psalm 133. His words further flesh out Jesus' answer to the crowd. Peterson writes, there are Christians, of course, who never put their names down on a membership list. There are Christians who refuse to respond to the call of worship each Sunday. There are Christians who say, I love God, but I hate the church. But they are members all the same, whether they like it or not, whether they acknowledge it or not. For God never makes private, secret salvation deals with people. His relationships with us are personal, yes. Intimate, true. But private, no. We are among brothers and sisters in faith. No Christian is an only child. We are called, all of us, to live life together in community, in unity. And it is in unified community that God's blessings overflow, consecrating us, renewing us. But life together in unity is not 
easy. Perhaps the first verse of Psalm 133 should really read, how good and pleasant and difficult it is when people live together in unity. We only have to be in a relationship or in a family to know that. Peterson, however, goes on to ask this. So the question is not, am I going to be part of a community of faith? But how am I going to live in this community of faith? How are you and I to live united in a community of faith when the very institution of church as we know it is changing? When culture wars dominate the news feeds, when the demands of life take us away from meeting regularly for worship, when disunity is the norm, how are we going to live together as a family of faith, much less a unified family of faith? I would like to make three suggestions that you and I might together adopt as we strive to live together in unity as followers of Jesus, with the hope that as we live in unity as a family of faith, what we share together will be like the sweet, sweet, fragrant oil poured out and running down Aaron's beard. And as is refreshing as the dew flowing from the misty peaks of Mount Hermon to the parched landscape of Zion. The first thing I'd like us to consider is this, listen to learn. James, Jesus' half-brother, says this in his letter to the 12 tribes of Israel. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Have you ever listened to someone and found yourself composing your retort, your response, your reply before they were ever finished speaking? Or found yourself so eager to jump in with your own story before theirs was done? And I have to confess, that is one of my faults. I get so excited that I'm already ready with my response and my story to share. Or have you ever felt yourself getting angry over the opinion of the speaker and what he was sharing or she was sharing because, frankly, you found their thoughts to be wrong, ill-informed, or ignorant, and you just stopped listening to them. James wrote in his words in AD 40 to 50, and that sentiment would be later reiterated in Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Effective People. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Could you and I learn to listen with intentionality, curiosity, humility, and respect, really hearing the words of the speaker and even hearing what is behind the words that are spoken so that the speaker feels understood, heard, and seen. Let us, as people of Christ, learn to listen as we listen to learn. Our second consideration, lift up prayers in love. Have you ever wondered what might be one of the most important pieces in our bulletins, our newsletters, our emails as a congregation? Is it the announcements of what's happening in the church? Our financial update? What's going to be the order of worship? I think perhaps it's one that we often overlook. The listing of the prayer needs of our family of faith and of the world. I must admit that I am often guilty of reading the prayer needs 
but not noting them someplace where I will see them on a regular daily basis. And my memory isn't such anymore that I can remember always what I've read. If we want to be united and brothers and sisters, we need to commit to lifting each other up regularly and repeatedly in prayer. Paul in Ephesians 6 says this, pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Our call is to pray. Our call is to be the ones offering words in prayer when the recipient of our prayer has none. Our call is to pray and pray and pray again until we hear that that prayer is no longer needed. Our call is to act on the words we so glibly say, oh, I'll pray for you. Our call is to be the one joining in prayers of thanksgiving when prayers are answered. As people of Christ, let us learn to love to pray for others as we lift up prayers in love. And lastly, live with Christ in the center. I remember in 2020 talking to my brother-in-law who informed me that he was no longer going to daily frequent Starbucks because of their stand on an issue. I replied that I was no longer purchasing a brand, a brand of beans because of the statements of the company's president. Our light-hearted banner went back and forth, but it underscored some differences on what we thought politically. But the two of us decided that we should let each of us have our own opinions. Because what was mattered for my brother-in-law and myself was the unity we felt as a family. This is very much a time of polarizing views. People with differing views that may be seated in the same pew as ours, in our same Bible studies, in our same offices or schools, in our same families. We want those with different viewpoints than ours to come around to thinking like us, and then we'd all be unified. The church, however, is not a doctrine or an idea or a theological viewpoint. The church is Christ himself. Living in the center is not meeting in the middle or insisting on the veracity of our own viewpoint, but each of us recognizing the person of Christ in the other. We choose as followers of faith to believe in the world, words of Paul. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called into the hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is above all, through all, and in all. As people of Christ, let us see Christ in the center of others so that we live with him in the center of ours. And as we live in unity, his blessings flow over us like the fragrant oil found in the Old Testament that consecrated the priest or welcomed the guest to the table. In unity, we become like that oil whose fragrance is so sweet that it beckons others to step into this community also. The blessing of new life represented by the dew falling down and reaching the parched lands of Zion reminds us of the new life that is found in each of us as Jesus Christ is at the center of our lives. And that refreshment that we have with Jesus Christ flows from us when we are unified to others searching for that same living water. 
our psalm ends with this. Yes, that's where God commands blessing, ordains eternal life. It is in unity that Yahweh, the God that was and is and ever will be, ordains what eternal life is. Peterson suggests that Psalm 133 throws out a hint of heaven, and it is a place of rousing good fellowship. Peter continues with these words, heaven is where relationships are warm and expectancies fresh. We are already beginning enjoy, in, to enjoy the life together that will be completed in the life everlasting, which means that heaven is nothing quite so much as a good party. Assemble in your imagination all the friends you enjoy being with the most the companions who evoke the deepest joy, your most stimulating relationships, the most delightful of shared experiences, the people with whom you'd feel completely alive, and I would add, the people that you are surprised that are there or hoped wouldn't be there. That is a hint of heaven, for there God commands the blessing and ordains eternal life. So beginning today, let you and let me make his kingdom, this party, come on earth as it is in heaven by listening to learn, lifting up prayers in love, and living with the Christ as our center. As we endeavor to be people for whom it is said, it is good and pleasant when God's people live in unity. Let you and I live together in unity so that others are drawn to join us in the family of faith, the eternal party, the dance of love, and where we will all sing together. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. May that be our song on our journey. Pray with me. Gracious God, we come to you needing each week the reminder that we were created for community and to be in community. Thank you for the gift of inviting us to your holy dance. We come needing to find you as seen in the people with whom we share a pew, a cup of coffee, and a life story. Thank you for drawing us to one another and blessing us with the fragrant oil of life found in unity with you. Our hearts grieve this week as once again our news feed was filled with yet another mass shooting this weekend, this time at a grocery store where ordinary people were doing ordinary tasks and also at a place where people went to celebrate. We don't have the words anymore, so we pray wordlessly, asking your son to be, intervene on their behalf. Our hearts grieve for places where Continued conflict upends life, and children grow up knowing the sounds of warfare instead of the quietness of peace. We grieve for those who are undergoing the wait for medical diagnoses, the wait for whether treatment was successful, and for those whom, the, whom the prognosis is there's nothing more we can do. Fill them with the surety of your peace and presence. Lord, as we step into summer in an increasing political arena, make us people who keep you at the center and see each other, every other, through your lens. As we step into this week, fill our calendars with holy interruptions and let us not fail to see them as opportunities to be your hands and feet and listening ears. We thank you for this fellowship of followers who each week seems to be, seeks to be a family of faith, 
united and rooted in with in you. Amen. Thank you. So it's time to introduce our Minute for Missions. And I'd like to introduce Katie Mueller. And you want to come on up? Um, Katie is the Executive Director of Quiet Waters Outreach. She started Quiet Waters Outreach in started at Quiet Waters Outreach in 2014 as the direct support professional for the bed and breakfast program. How our program from, from uh, Tuesday's Treasures has grown, hasn't it? But by doing so and having the weekends, then that allowed her to stay at home as a mom during the week. And her favorite thing while working in this role is being able to provide for guests a fun experience. And we've seen pictures, and Donald certainly has been in the center stage of all of that as well. And she's making, making a difference for families. So she's done basically everything from soup to nuts, medications, prepared meals, took guests on outings, and put her heart into time with the guests and we know how special that is and how much that means to us as well. She has a couple of family members with de developmental disabilities and knows the impact of respite. But she's moved up in the organization and am I stealing all your no, information? No. Okay. It's kinda, it was weird to write it for myself. Oh. You can get up and say thank you, yeah. <laughs> Over the years, she's continued to move up in the organization from direct support professional to bed and breakfast program manager, program director to co-executive director to where she is today. She's managing a team of 15 employees and serving over 100 local families through day programs, bed and breakfast, and over Zoom. Quiet Waters is an organization that's very small, but provides a large impact. She's also an encyclopedia of knowledge, and so we're going to have her share some of that knowledge today and how we can help as well. So, Katie. So first of all, I don't like being the center of attention. So when she's saying all those things. Um, so I've been at Quiet Waters, like she said, since 2014. I was a single mom and saw, you know what, this was another family outside of my family that I could help provide support to. Uh, Steve Risto, which many of you know that started Quiet Waters in 1997, actually hired me and I was extremely excited to be able to work work under him and learn his heart and soul for individuals with disabilities and how we can make a bigger impact on the community. So I'm thrilled to, to be here today and be able to be in the role that I am and continue his mission. It's evolved over time, obviously. States change, funding changes, supports change, and uh, we're, we're just thrilled to still be here after all this time. But our footprint's really small, and so my big Big focus uh, being in this role is really expanding our footprint, helping reach more families to make sure that we're serving the community best. So I have a few slides. First of all, before I go into this, fantastic church. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, and as far as your fundraiser goes for the roof, I am blown away. That is extremely incredible. So round of applause for 
who's putting that fundraiser on. All right. So Quiet Waters Outreach is dedicated to serving individuals with developmental disabilities, their families, and caregivers by providing services to restore their spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental health. Wow. That's every single aspect you can possibly think of to provide support. And this was Steve's heart and soul was trying to figure out how do we do this. And if you go to the next slide, this is an about me video. The boy is most happy. I show not what. He picked me right down at Green Pastures. He is me beside Quiet Waters. Being at Quiet Waters, it's like a, it's like a family. I get to come here and be with my second family all day. And uh, I don't think a whole lot of people get to say that about their jobs. There are not nearly enough faith-based organizations that support our people. Knowing that you're making a difference in the community and serving those who have those needs, it's amazing. Today, we are planning to go bowling. And before that, we're gonna do a little bit of exercise outside. I really love working with Quiet Waters. It gets me out in the community myself and doing the exact same things that I'm here to support them for. We love Quiet Waters! Woo! <laughs> They're hilarious and they, they make me laugh and they think that I'm hilarious for some reason. My favorite part about Quiet Waters now is they do in their work with kids treasures, staff, and volunteers. I really appreciate Quiet Waters and all that they've done. They meant a lot to my son's spiritual growth. We offer via Zoom our Wednesday Bible studies. It's a great time to connect and to get to know our guests on a really personal level. The guests really enjoy the Zoom sessions. I actually enjoy them a lot as well. One of my favorite things about working here is um, all the jokes that I get to make with our guests and the jokes that they get to make with me. They keep me very humble, <laughs> that's, for, that's for sure. My son has been participating in Quiet Waters Outreach for about 10 years now. I have been happy with the Quiet Waters newsletters. Inside of the newsletters, there are some brand new Oh, not this. I have been in Grand Waters for 23 years. I have been at the board member a long time. I've been working here. I, I clean the house. I look at everything. It's an absolute blessing to be here. I feel like I'm at home when I walk through those doors. So thank you, Quiet Waters, for all that you do. I love Quiet Waters. Outwears. So overall, those are the, the ins and outs of, uh, obviously it was recorded during COVID, all the masks and all of that. Um, the only update I would say is that the Zoom Bible study is now on Tuesdays and Keith, focus on Keith, uh, actually is a volunteer for this program. If there's anyone that's ever interested in helping lead the Bible studies, which you'll see here in a minute. We'd love to have volunteers. So we have, obviously we have to be careful between church and state, right? So we have our services that we provide, but we also have the ministry side of our organization. Countless hours I spent, uh, I spend supporting families, whether they're in crisis, they're wondering what the next steps are. That's where the encyclopedia comes into play because I take it upon myself to, if I can't provide supports, I wanna find someone that can. So anytime I have opportunities to have resource fairs, I'm gathering any information that I can to make sure that families can have the support that they need to continue to support their family member, to be filled up with joy and be able to keep going and live the best life they possibly can as well as their family members. Uh, so day program, here's a little snippet of some of the, some of the fun activities that we do. We, our day program's focus is really giving back to the community. So any volunteer jobs we can possibly have, we, we want to do. Uh, we actually support Rock and Rooms, which helps provide support to individuals, so kids that are in the hospital for more than two weeks. They help prepare baskets, they help go shopping, they help all sorts of things to help decorate their rooms so that way kids that are in the hospital for more than two weeks can feel more welcomed in their hospital room. They also help out with North Plains Library, cleaning the library, tidying, a variety of other things, Northwest Christian Church, sorry, I'm going off the top of my head, 
Um, Northwest Christian Church, they help with a variety of things there as well, uh, putting, putting you know, pencils and stuff in the pews and anything that they're really needing support with. So anything we can do to give back as well. So obviously we are a nonprofit as well, and so we definitely have volunteers, but anything that we can do to help them have that sense of self and give back and know that they are loved and welcomed in the community is key. All right, next slide. So day program, I realize it's probably too small to see over there. Uh, these calendars go out so families know what's going on. So it, I was trying to show what the activities are. So there's a variety of the volunteer jobs, like I said, but also there's fun. We're taking them bowling, we're taking them to parks. OMSI, really anything we can do to really help with the social inter interaction piece, inclusion, and just overall being able to live a life just like all of us. All right, next slide. And then we also have the Zoom. So some guests might work two days a week and maybe they're home three days during the week. So the Zoom gives them an opportunity to hop on and um, have some interaction with friends. So they can log on from the comfort of their own home for an hour and socialize with a staff leading this. Uh, so Mondays is like Monday social, but then there might be other activities like a trip to the zoo or, um, Jeopardy or games or anything that they can do to, to socially interact on there as well. All right, next. Um, doesn't look like the wording showed up, but it says bed and breakfast at the bottom. So just showing a variety of things. We'll take them bowling, their learning skills, uh, out in the community, aviation museum. So I just tried to pull some pictures to show. The blazer game is the top left. Um, anything we can do to to be out and enjoying the community and, and everyone here. A very unique experience, Quiet Waters is still the only bed and breakfast program in the state of Oregon. So we are a program that they can come hang out for the weekend, parents can get some respite at home, but I always tell them anytime they come for a tour, you will have more fun than your parents have. Doesn't matter if they're going to the beach, whatever, we will, we will be creating a very fun and loving space for them. All right, next. All right, then there's Bible study. This is what Keith's been helping with. I see a shelf in my little sit, this Bible person that we know how know how is to this ability. His name is should be called one of both. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 and 2 say good good news to comfort you, my people. Let's drag it in to make it a highway for our God. Climb a high mountain. You are the preacher of good news. Raise your voice. Make it good and loud. You, each of you, are a preacher of good news. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't need anything more. He hears for me like a lamb guiding me to lie down in green pastures and leading me beside quiet waters. He only wishing myself. I share the good news of Jesus with others through our lives, actions, and words. Show kindness, tell of God's love, help others whenever and wherever and however we can. Bible study has evolved. It is one of those things that a lot of people view a Bible study for individuals with disabilities as they're sitting being preached to in an understanding for themselves. And the big difference with ours is that we find ways that we can incorporate them and teach each other and have each, other, have each of them feel empowered to love on one another. Share, I know one thing recently they've been doing at the end of Bible study is sharing why God loves each of them and giving the guests the opportunity to say, you know, Donald, this is why God loves you. And then sharing what's something wonderful about Donald and building each other up, which I think is one of the most beautiful things. So it's, it's something that there, you know, Tuesday Treasures was happening in the churches and they were being, and still are some churches, um, 
still are going on, but it's beautiful that we can still have these other environments where people can just join on at home and still have those connections. So if there's any way to within other churches or you can help network or bring people in, we'd love to have people join in on the Bible study or for programs to help provide support, whether it's to the parents or to the individuals, whatever we can possibly do. So ways that we can help Quiet Waters is, is sharing. Reality is if you know someone with a developmental disability and they're impacted and need support, whatever it may be, reach out. If I can't help them, I will find information to make sure that they can be supported and know that they are loved and not alone and they will be able to succeed. Uh, volunteering. So we do have, like I said, Keith's been volunteering. Um, his wife also has volunteered at the auction. Uh, Nona has volunteered a lot as well. Um, if there's ever a time that you'd want to hop on board and help with a fundraising event that we have, or right now I'm working on a deck project if anyone wants to come paint this week. Um, <laughs> There's things over time that may be unexpected projects that we might be looking for volunteers. We also are seeking volunteers for our board of directors, just how to help really support the organization and continue on. Um, donating, obviously, is a fantastic way with being a nonprofit. The state definitely doesn't fund us where we need to be, so in order to maintain two houses and three cars and employees and all of those wonderful things, we have to fundraise a lot and provide support for activities and such for the guests too. And prayer, 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 prayer. The world is challenging, right, for all of us. And being able to come together and pray for the individuals that we serve, other community members, the families, that is really so impactful. Our employees, I mean, we all have our own lives, we all have own situations, but really knowing that we can come together and pray for one another for strength and just growth, I think is huge. So I just want to thank you all for being here. We will have a table out in, where was it again? The sanction? Fellowship. Fellowship Hall. Oh, sorry. Fellowship Hall. Um, if you have any direct questions, I'm always happy to answer and just want to thank you guys so much for having me be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's good to get an update while we're at it. And we're talking about mission partners and, and uh, service. I think she probably announced that we've got a side project next week that we're incorporating with our, with our giving, our putting together our packages. Um, and also, we'd like to pray for Carly in her new endeavors, and so. so let us pray. Father God, in whom we live and move and have our being, as we consider the world around us today, we are grateful to know that you are near. We thank you that your presence will not fail us no matter the challenges we face. We are aware of so many challenges in our own lives, the lives of those we care about, and in the world around us. Help us trust that you never give up on situations which we find overwhelming. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our congregation and our ministries, its leaders and volunteers, and the faithful work of all churches in our community. We pray especially today for the ministry of Quiet Waters. May your goodness be experienced in and through their work. Unite us in our witness to the love of Jesus. Open our eyes to new possibilities to serve together as we pray the words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
all step into the world unified in faith, bringing the fragrant oil and refreshing water of Jesus Christ into a parched place.